Welcome to the Palm Creek Golf and RV Resort here in Castle Grant, Arizona, host site of the USAPA 2017 National Championships presented by Design Pickle. Nearly 1,400 players have competed in tournament style play all weekend, and this broadcast features some of the top ranked players in the sport. Watch as they compete for the title of USAPA National Champion. The desert beauty of Phoenix, Arizona underscores highly competitive play in four divisions. Men's singles, women's singles, senior open mixed doubles, and open mixed doubles. CBS Sports Network is proud to present this championship event. I'm Drew Wafty, and I'll be joined by various analysts during each of the upcoming matches as we break down the strategy and skills necessary for these competitors to rise to the top of their game. The 2017 USAPA National Championships. You know, pickleball has a unique history. The game started out during the summer of 1965 on Bainbridge Island in Washington at the home of former state representative Joel Pritchard. He and two of his friends, Bill Bell and Barney McCallum, returned from golf one day and found their families bored one Saturday afternoon. They attempted to set up badminton, but no one could find the shuttlecock. Well, they improvised with a wiffle ball, lowered the badminton net, and fabricated paddles of plywood from a nearby shed. The rules of pickleball is a game that goes to 11. Only the server or serving team can score and you must win by two. Best two games out of three to win the match. Serves are underhand and must land on the diagonal opponent's court, similar to tennis. The ball must bounce once before the first return, and there is an area seven feet from the net known as the non-volley zone. The non-volley zone on a pickleball court is seven feet by 20 feet. The overall court size is 20 feet by 44 feet, which is the same size as a regulation badminton court. The service boxes are 10 feet by 15 feet. Coming up next, the men's open singles. The 2017 USAPA Pickleball National Championships on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Design Pickle. Unlimited graphic design help for everyone. Turn your vision into a masterpiece with Design Pickle. By Sun RV Resort. Amazing RV resort destinations from coast to coast. And by Pickleball Central. The Pickleball Superstore. Our first match that we join in progress is the men's open singles. We start with game two after Tyson McGuffin won game one, 11-7 over Ben Johns. Tyson McGuffin is out of Yakima, Washington and literally grew up as a wrestler early on, an accomplished tennis player even to this day. He won the silver medal at the 2016 Tournament of Champions Men's Pro Singles and was the champion at the 2016 SoCal Summer Classic along with the 2016 Centralia Championship, the Men's International Pro Singles as well. Ben Johns, a freshman at the University of Maryland, comes out of College Park, Maryland. He was the Triple Crown winner at the 2017 Pickleball Canada Nationals. He was also the U.S. Open Men's Singles Champion this year. The Tournament of Champions Men's Singles Champion this year as well as the USAPA Pacific Northwest Regional and the PPF Men's Doubles Champion. He's the youngest of seven kids, and believe it or not, Ben Johns would one day like to be President of the United States. Sarah Ansbury joins me in the booth. Let's go courtside now. Oh. No, couldn't play. Wrong-footed McGuffin on that one, no. side out. And there's, you know, that's the control that Ben has as he hits that ball and he waits. He doesn't move too soon. He's waiting to see what his next move should be and he's a little more patient than most players. Oh, oh. net cord. I, you know what, I think Tyson could have been there. <laughs> <laughs> You're yeah. probably right. I mean, he had him. Tyson was going the other way. McGuffin with the serve, 0-1. Second game of this gold medal match. Oh. That was just wide off the net. It's a little bit loopier and it's yeah. kind of a slower serve than, than usual. That sails long, mm -hmm. side out. Zero 
Yeah, he's going with a little more loopier serve. Yeah. And Look that was that. right yeah. on the line. He's getting a little more spin out of it. And it, and it could be he's trying to push Ben a little bit back and trying to get him to lift the ball a little bit more so he's not getting such a hard drive out of it. Yeah. There's another one. Game is tied. That was on the line. Linesman called that one good. Yeah. Side out, 1-1. One, one. You know, and I bet if the court was bigger, Tyson probably would have got it. <laughs> yeah, the fences are kind of kind of close to the uh, sidelines here. Yeah. Oh, he got it. Whoa, what a play by Ben Johns. Very good hands. It's a replay of that shot. Great play by Ben Johns. Comes around, goes right inside the court. Gosh, yeah, sometimes that net court helps you out. Works for you. It's a great ball behind him. Oh. Did he, oh my. That was. What a great play. What a great shot by Ben Johns. A great example. I mean, Tyson's in charge at that point. Every ball Ben hit was behind him. And just giving that open space, he got back in it. Was, I mean, it's amazing. A lot of times you have all these rec players think they can do, <laughs> you know, go from this crazy defense into offense. This is not your average pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> now McGuffin with a clean backhand winner. Those rec players get wrecked and they end up in the yeah. hospital doing that. <laughs> I'm out there giving lessons <laughs> sometimes and they're like, well, I want to hit a hit that forehand like Wesley or something. <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's talk about a few things first. McGuffin just a point down now, 2-3. He captured the first game, 11-7. Gold medal match here at the 2017 USAPA National Championships. Now that serve went a little bit lower, a little bit more like what he had been doing, and Ben was able to kind of drive that and get a little more out of it. That's, That's going to sail out. long. Yep. Tyson is definitely animated out there. Yeah. <laughs> You'll see him do those little fake shots with his paddle sometimes. Now the loopy serve, 2-3 yeah. now. Uh, oh. And, he, and he, I think he got what he wanted. He got a shorter return, which would enable them to do stuff, but just kind of mistimed it. Mm. That's just bad, bad footing, didn't quite get his feet mm -hmm. in the ground. 4-2, John's leading here, game two. Another tremendous get. Now the big difference you see with both of them is, is you'll see Ben lean towards a slice more often, whereas you'll see Tyson lean towards hitting a little more with topspin. You could see on those volleys that he was just hitting. That's a beautiful return. That yeah, was nice and deep. McGuffin was kind of backpedaling on that. Yeah. And I'll tell you something about this court as well. Is that backhand corner where Ty sits at? That's a tough spot. Mm -hmm. I, don't know, I don't know what it is, but when I'm playing on this court, that's where I aim a lot. It's a good idea, but just not quite executed. John's kind of shaking his head on that one. He's yeah. a little upset with that. Yeah, it looked like he just. I mean, he was in the right spot as a right shot, but he was pulling away from it before he got to finish his shot. He knows he made that as a mistake. Yeah. And McGuffin with a yeah, baby. 3-4 <laughs> now. Mm. That was just wide. That was very close. Oh. 
That's wide. And that's just reaching a little too much. If Tyson would have just let that bounce, he would have had more choices with that ball. That's a good ball. Nice stretch. Mm -hmm. Three five, second set, second game. Three, McGuffin serving. That's wide and little, long. A little extra pressure on him. Tyson's playing a little bit of his game. He's dropping in the kitchen a little bit more. Making Ben push up on the ball, reach a little bit. Two-handed backhand there. And you can look at the composure when Ben's at the line and just kind of how I was saying just a few minutes ago where if Tyson would let that bounce, that's what Ben did. Mm -hmm. Give himself a little extra time so he's making the right choices, but also so he can get Tyson to guess where he's going. Oh, oh. lucky on that. Net yeah. cord stays in. That pushes his lead to 6-4. That's a good timeout. Timeout, and we'll take one as well. 6-4, second game here in the gold medal match for the Men's Open at the 2017 USAPA National Championships presented by Design Pickle. Back right after this. You are looking live at gold medal match, men's open singles. Ben Johns and Tyson McGuffin, 6-4, second game. McGuffin won game one. Johns leading 6-4 here. Well, both players utilized their, their little squad during that timeout for support and maybe some extra coaching. They both went to their corners and had a few people out there helping them out. With a good try to wrap it around the post. That yep. didn't work that time. 6-5, six, 5-6 five, five, six now, McGuffin serving. Now that's, that right there is a great example. Tyson was able to hold and not rush that shot. And being able to just hold for a second and get your opponent off balance slightly is huge. On the line. Oh, uh, it's a right idea. That pole can just drive you nuts sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> We are all knotted at six in game two. Tyson looks like a, a prize fighter looking at yeah. his corner, <laughs> ready to get back into the ring. That's wide. Little breeze right there. Yeah. Left-handed shot. Yeah, that's. Sometimes on those lobs, the balls don't bounce as high yeah. as you can think you can hit an overhead with it. Yeah, and I'm thinking <laughs> if t that would have been had Tyson right in the sun if he was going for that forehand. Yeah. I took his time with it. You know, right now, Ben looks a little tired. He just yeah. looks like he's moving a little slower. Yep. He's kind of being a little, I don't know, not, not putting as much effort into it. Well, put a lot of effort yeah. into that one. Down the yeah. line winner. Back on top, 7-6 now. And, and that right there, that's just, I mean, just his range. Just him able to, when he's even tired and slow, him fully extending with that can create a lot from that ball. And that ball hitting the net kind of upset Tyson's timing a little bit. Oh. Sail that one wide. 8-6 lead now for Johns. That might be sailing long. No, well, that hit the line. That line. Wow. That looked yeah, yeah, that, that was, one was out though. Right 
Yeah, that's just got to be a little frustrating right now. I know I would be. Now that's that, right. Look long. That did look long. Oh, and yeah. John's is he's complaining about it now. Oh, yeah. overrule. Byron the yeah. ref was overruling that. That's good. And I think that's really tough because right now if you look at that line, there's a lot of shadows right there. <laughs> Tyson faked a swing at that one. <laughs> now I think that's the third or fourth time yeah. that that same play has happened where Tyson's come in and uh, and Ben's going towards his forehand. So I think Tyson let a couple go by, but now he's just been sitting on that forehand waiting for Ben to go there. A little two-hander. That's a good ball. Now what he gets out of that is you can see Ben, on average, he'll take that one-hander and he'll slice it. But when he's able to put that left hand on it, he, c he puts a little topspin on it. He can get under it and get a little more lift out of it. Yeah, look at that swing. That was good. 9-6 now. And then Tyson's arguing this call. Yeah, I, I think we've got a tough angle. I, I thought it was good. That's mm -hmm. tough, but mm -hmm. I think that's a good time for Tyson to take a timeout. If he saw it wide, then it's cool his nerves. Not let that affect his game. We'll keep it right here. I'm noticing now with uh, Simone Jojing, the gold medal winner in the women's singles today, talking to Ben Johns. So they played together quite a bit. They're both from South Florida. Spent a lot of time together. And in Tyson's corner, you got Morgan Evans. Both play for Selkirk. And Morgan will pretty much be at the sideline of every, every match, singles match that Tyson plays. Mm -hmm. And it, it, you're seeing that more and more, having that support off the court. I've got people that are there during my matches. You know, it, it's from tennis and other sports. We, we come with that. And it, you're seeing it more at our level of pickleball. I actually this morning was on the court with Lucy for her earlier matches and just sitting and talking them through. Lucy is Lucy Kovalova. She's an up and coming star on this uh, pickleball circuit. Yeah, she's, she was tired today. I, you know, I was expecting to see her in the finals a little bit, but man, it's been a big week for her. Oh, right at That's the bottom. Yep. That's the first time he's done that in this match. That's a very good ball. Jams him up. Ben was looking for that outside shot. And that is that's a very common strategy, you know, hitting someone at their chest. There's a huge difference when we hit someone. Obviously, we <laughs> we're not going to hurt them. <laughs> it, it happens sometimes, but you know, we're we're hitting hitting him softly, basically, medium pace ball, just so they can't get out of the way. That's going to go wide. That's a good eye, yeah. Well, Tyson now within one, eight, nine. He's come back. He's keeping us cool. Both of them are. They're both co very collected. There, gives it right back to yep. him. Same play. It's a good tactic. Mm-hmm. Nine, eight, Johns. Very controlled. Set him up very nicely for that cross court. Yeah. It's it's really tough when you're playing singles and you're playing that whole no volley line because you're going side to side so quickly. That was a really good job holding his balance and maintaining composure. Oh, no, that's just easy point for McGuffin ties this game up now at nine all. Yeah, you don't see that happen very much. Yeah. 
It's a big play. And we are at championship yeah. point for Tyson McGuffin, 10-9. Now, I don't know if Ben has a timeout. If I were him, I'd be using it. It's a big, big time. Yeah, looks like He's just taking his time. Both of them, actually, are taking yeah. their time. Smart on both ways. Uh, I think in the earlier match we saw them, Tyson had quite a few match points and just wasn't closing it. He took a timeout, composed himself, got it together. Oh. oh, wow. It must have hit the pole. I'm thinking. Yeah, I think you're right. It's the only thing I can. Let's, let's take a look see. at it right here. Yeah, it oh did. yeah, it came off the top yeah. of the pole. Good call by Byron the ref. Yeah. All right, Ben John serving nine ten. Look how how long he's taking to hit those shots. Ben is. Which is very smart. Two hands on that lob. <laughs> and again. Oh, not enough oh. that time. That's just pure defense right there. Yeah. Just trying to get him up there and and sometimes it works. It's it's tough to be hitting four or five lobs in a row. <laughs> Championship point on the paddle of Tyson McGuffin. 11-7 winner in the first game of 10-9 now. Great return. That's that corner you were wow. talking yeah. about. I'm telling you, you hit that corner, <laughs> points just come. <laughs> Crowd cheering on Tyson McGuffin. Uh -huh. Maybe the third's the charm. Here we go. Get himself focused. Ben looks focused. Oh, oh. just rushing it. That, that's, I mean, this is tough. It's tough to close at, at these moments when you've got that serve. That's wide. I'm nervous for them. I mean, <laughs> 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 I, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty used to seeing these guys go three games. They always battle it out. Two hands on that ball. Oh, oh wow. just wide. I, I look, Tyson knew it as soon as he yeah. hit it. You saw him, you know. And, uh, that's, he had it. Though. Yeah. There's his timeout. He's using it. Which, yeah. yeah. Smart idea. And we're yeah. we're going to take one as well. Third game of the gold medal match, 10-9, McGuffin leading. Back after this commercial break. The crowd has seen a good one here. The men's open gold medal match, Ben Johns, Tyson McGuffin. I think everyone just wants a third game. I, I, <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> oh, yeah. We got a tie game now, 10 up. You have to win by two. It's a big point right there. Wow, on the line. That's a great ball. Yeah. I, and I can't tell you how difficult the shots that Ben's hitting. You know, he's off his back foot, and he's able to drop those right into the kitchen with great control. Those are very tough. Tyson put a little bit of pace on that forehand. Yep. Johns couldn't handle that. That sailed wide. Back to championship point one more time for Tyson McGuffin. Wow. That's it. Wow. Tyson McGuffin 
12-10 in the second game is your gold medal winner at the 2017 USAPA National Championships. Fantastic match. Both players put up a great match, but Tyson McGuffin, I'm telling you, the, I've never seen a, an athlete stretch and go after balls like he does. You know, he, he, he doesn't give up. It, his heart and his drive, it's amazing. He really put his effort into this tournament. He's played well all week. And I know he wanted that singles title. He didn't get quite as far as he wanted to in doubles. And that's the cleanest and the most controlled I've seen him play, I think, at, at, at all. And Ben Johns has nothing to be ashamed of, only 19 years old, but he is the up and coming face yeah. of men's pickleball. Uh, he's got plenty of titles already. He's gonna get some more. Both of them, I'm sure they'll be playing this match over and over again. Tyson McGuffin, men's open gold medal champion here at the 2017 USAPA National Championships. How does that sound to you, Tyson? Oh, it sounds gorgeous. Thank you so much. You played Ben Johns twice in the same day, won four straight from him. That's, that's a great accomplishment. Yeah, I've, uh, I've played Ben a couple times this year. I think overall record is uh, I'm like three and seven against him. So uh, I came in with a different game plan today, thanks to Coach Morgan Evans. Um, but yeah, he's a, he's a tough kid. He's only, he's only 19 years old. So, um, you know, for only being 19, he's very composed and very mature on the court. So I was just lucky to go home with the gold today. I was here last year and ended up losing um, in the finals to uh, uh, Marcin Rospeski. Um, so it's, it's nice to get a national title. Now, you haven't been playing pickleball that long. I know you've been a great tennis player in the past. How have you seen this sport evolve over the past few years? Yeah, so, I mean, it's the fastest growing sport in America. Um, I, I picked it up about two years ago, and within about two weeks, I was a full junkie. So I totally fell in love with it. Um, I, I think with how social it is, with how fun it is, with how easy it is to play, uh, with how um, inexpensive it is, it's going to be taken off here, um, I think, I think in, uh, um, all across the world. And you've been playing across the country for quite some time as well. What about the crowds this week at Palm Creek? Oh, man, it was awesome. I was here last year as well, and uh, it's so fun coming to, coming to this event. Uh, thanks to all the volunteers, all the staff, um, all the tournament desk people. Um, I mean, it was an awesome crowd. We got the nice big stadium behind us here. So um, I have all my friends and family here and my, um, 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 and my sponsor, Selkirk Sports, as well. So. i got to ask you a final question. You run around the court like I've never seen anybody run around. You're like Rafael Nadal out here. How do you actually slide on a, on a hard true or, or hard court like this, like you're playing at Roland Garros? Well, it's about 85 degrees out, and I have nice uh, worn-down shoes, you know, <laughs> so it's fairly easy to slide. But, yeah, that's just kind of how I move. So, All right. Tyson McGuffin, gold medal winner at the 2017 USAPA National Championships. Coming up next, the conclusion of the women's singles match with Simone Jarjing and Arena Tereshenko. Coming up next, the conclusion of the open women's singles match with Simone Jarjing and Arena Tereshenko. Jarjing won game one. Simone Jarjing, one of the most decorated players in the world of pickleball, hails out of Naples, Florida. She won the women's and mixed doubles championship of the 2016 USAPA Nationals, was the women's singles champion at the 2016 US Open, and the pro singles and doubles champ at the 2016 Tournament of Champions. She played tennis at Auburn and Fresno State and is the former head tennis coach for the Spartans at Michigan State University. Arena Tereshenko out of Bellevue, Washington, won the Women's Singles Championship of the 2016 USAPA national title and the 2016 US Open champion women's 30 and over doubles as well as the mixed 25 and over doubles at the US Open Championship. She also played number one tennis singles and doubles for the Red Raiders at Texas Tech. Tereshenko to serve now. Down one, four, five, second game. All right, so Simone took her first time out just to stop a little bit of that momentum that uh, Irina has going. Simone in that classic tennis <laughs> serve <laughs> setup. Oh, it hits that wide. Nice strong return from Tereshenko, and Simone couldn't handle that. Side out, 4 5. Arena serving again. She tried to roll that backhand over Simone. Nets it 
side out now. Back to Simone at 5-4. Okay, we also have uh, not only our women open doubles, uh, singles, but we also have our um, senior women singles and the men's singles going on as well at the same time here. Oh, what a great wow. battle here. Tereshenko is oh. running her. Great point. And the crowd appreciates great play here. Great pickleball action here all week long. And some of the junior players coming up, incredible talent. Oh, on a missed serve. Unforced error on the serve there for Tereshenko. Goes back to Jarjing. Oh, that was going down the line. Tereshenko covered it, but netted it 6-4. Didn't four. get there in time, yes. Nice deep return. Yeah. Simone was kind of backpedaling on that and couldn't yes. get it up. Tereshenko serving now 4-6. Second game, she dropped the first one 11-9 to Simone. Oh, little dinking action going yeah. on there. Arena is known for her uh, backhand dinks. Nice slicing. Down by one now, 5-6. Down the line, she's got it covered. Oh. Great outstretched hand. Look at this. That's wide. Oh. Beautiful point. For a tall girl, Tereshenko can cover a lot of ground. Jarjing up by two now, 7-5. This might be a good time to call a timeout. Oh, That's exactly. GG, <laughs> <laughs> the coach. We're going to keep it right here. Tereshenko taking a timeout. What do you think she's thinking right now? I think she's upset with herself because she's just not executing her shots. I mean, you know, the opportunities are there. She's just not executing. So that's what she needs to work on. Just, you know, get that ball over the net. She's running Jarjing back and forth, but Simone gets to everything. Yeah. It's like a human backboard. And uh, Simone is talking to uh, Steve Kennedy, um, who works with her on a uh, singles game. He's a, a great player himself um, from Florida. So he's probably getting some uh, tips there. And unlike in tennis, pickleball players can literally go <laughs> yes. and stand toe-to-toe -to -toe <laughs> with their coach between points. A very social game, yeah. <laughs> You're watching the 2017 USAPA National Championships presented by Design Pickle here at the beautiful Palm Creek Golf RV and Resort in Casa Grande, Arizona. Drew Wathy, Gigi LaMaster bringing you all the action here. And we've got some great action going on. Simone, Simone Jarjing serving up 7-5, second game, gold medal match. Oh, and that's oh. wide. She went for the low percentage shot. Sometimes when yeah. the ball hits the net cord and goes over, your timing gets off just a little bit. Exactly. 8-5 now. That's yeah, very well played. All right, so we have a side out at 5-8. You can kind of tell the crowd really wants a third game here. <laughs> and our Breeze has picked up. Irina has, uh, has the win with her. Oh, oh 
just she wide. Did, she went around the post. Tereshenko with the point, 6-8. Tereshenko kind of slipped a little bit after that return. So it's side out. Jarjing serving now 8-6, second game. So if you noticed, Irina has changed, uh, changed up her serve. She has gone to a lob serve instead of a hard pace serve. Great return. Well, once again, Jarjing gets, gets to it. it. Yes. But Tereshenko with the winner this time. Side. Seven eight now cuts Jarjing's lead down to one. Sounds like the crowd is really pulling for Tereshenko in this one. Beautiful. And that's in two. So we have a tied game. Eight all. Jarjing won game one, 11-9. Eight all now, second game in this gold medal match. There's that lob serve. Oh. She wanted that to go over because Simone had committed to go to the other side. Beautiful shot Beautiful. by Tereshenko. Yeah. Both these ladies expending a lot of energy out there, you can tell. Oh, what a great get by Jarjing. Oh, and oh. she still gets there. Oh. oh! What a point. Phenomenal play. This is just to get the side out. <laughs> <laughs> Pickleball at its best. Simone Jarjing, Arena Tereshenko. Eight up. That's wide. Simone <laughs> with her usual firing herself up. Nine eight. And Tereshenko is going to call a timeout, and we'll do as as well. 9-8, Jarjing up, second game, leading ga one game already. Drew Wathi and Gigi Lamaster at the National Championships, back after this commercial break. <laughs> Jarjing to serve, 9-8, second game. Oh, that's oh, long. That's and we are at championship point. I don't know if you could have played much better than Tereshenko's played. No. She's a phenomenal player. It's just that um, I think she's brought uh, Simone to the net a few. And that's long. And this is it. And that's gold it. Medal. Gold medal to Simone Jiangjing. 11-9, 11-8. Over Irina Tereshenko. The crowd on their feet, they really appreciated this level of play here. The women's gold medal champion here at the 2017 USAPA National Championship, Simone Jorjing. Does that ever get old? <laughs> no, of course not. I love it. But, uh, you know, this week, uh, this weekend for me, it's been a spectacular. A lot, lots of great competition. Uh, women's doubles with my partner Corinne Carsibenshine. Uh, yesterday with you know Daniel Moore. I want to thank them for partnering up with me. I had a blast with them. Uh, and singles, you know, it's always a grind and it's mind over body for sure. 
uh, after playing two days hard. And I'm not young anymore. I, I'm, I'm getting up there in the numbers. So, um, yeah, it was, it's a fight. It's a grind. Uh, but I enjoy every minute of it. Marina Tereshenko really put up a great battle. That wingspan of hers, that's tough to pass her. Correct. And, I, you know, to be honest, we've played so many times. Uh, I think she knows my game. I know her game. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, like we enjoy competing against each other. We have great battles. Uh, it's always fun and, and always a grind, you know, brutal for the body. But, but, you know, it's I think we put up a good show and I think everybody was, you know, enjoy the, the match. Speaking about brutal for the body, I don't think people realize that you guys are out here for a week. You play anywhere from seven, eight, nine matches a day. At the end of the week, it's just must be physically exhausting. I actually came uh, just to play Friday, Saturday, Sunday uh, because I can do it. My body won't hold up. Um, I am, you know, like I said, <laughs> I'm getting up there in the years. But but it's tough. It's tough. You know, it's it's a very very it's a hard court. Uh, it's tough on the body, uh, but also like you don't know, pickleball is is so much fun. But it's it's hard in tournament play because you play and then you off, you play and then you off. So it's the muscles get that shock when you go out and play for you know an hour and then stop for an hour. It's it's pretty tough. Yeah. And you travel around the country. It must make you real excited to see crowds like this. Absolutely. I mean, it's the support that we get and the vibe. It's a totally different atmosphere to be playing in front of other people. Um, you know, it's, you enjoy it so much more, and, and it's, it's really entertaining, I hope. so. That's, you know. And finally, longtime tennis coach with the Spartans at Michigan State. How much did that help you acclimate yourself to pickleball? I know you haven't been playing pickleball that long. You know, your tennis background has been pretty impressive playing at Auburn and Fresno State as well. Yes. Yeah, so oh, you did your homework. I like it. Thank you. Well, um, you know, experience definitely that helps and competing and being in, in big stages definitely helps. Uh, so that's been be very beneficial for me in the pickleball world. I have no problem playing in front of crowds or, you know, in championship matches. I feel like I rise up to the occasion uh, and all that experience just really, really helps. Truly, I, I don't get nervous anymore, which I think, you know, I get excited and sometimes I got to control my, my level of excitement so I don't exert myself. But yeah, it really, really helps. That's Simone Jarjing, the women's gold medal winner here at the 2017 USAPA National Championship. Coming up next, the senior mixed doubles. The 2017 USAPA Pickleball National Championships on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by ProTech Pickleball. Innovation, technology, performance. Advantage you by Selkirk Sport. Made here, made right, no compromise. And by Paddle Tech, the paddle of champions. Coming up next, the senior mixed doubles. As we move into the evening matches, we join the senior mixed doubles teams, Chris Anderson and Kevin Booth, going up against Alex Hamner and Scott Moore in a tiebreaker game. Alex Hamner out of Carlsbad, California is a 10-time USAPA national champion, was the 2016 US Open champion in mixed doubles for 30 and over, four-time Tournament of Champions medalist. And in high school, Hamner was on the sidelines quite a bit as a high school cheerleader. Scott Moore out of Colorado Springs, Colorado was a six-time USAPA national champion, was the 2016 US Open champion in men's and mixed doubles 50 and over, a three-time Tournament of Champions gold medalist He's going to go down as one of the game's greatest players as a 12-time USAPA national champion. Chris Anderson is out of Newport Beach, California, was the gold medalist in the mixed and women's doubles in the Lake Spring Fling PPF event, the gold medalist in women's doubles at the Tournament of Champions, and the silver medalist in mixed doubles at the Tournament of Champions as well. Kevin Booth out of Lake Forest, California, was a five-time outdoor racket pole national champion was also the 2017 silver medalist in mixed doubles at the Tournament of Champions and the gold medalist in mixed doubles at the Lake Spring Fling PPF event. A tiebreaker is a game to 15 and a win by two is used to determine the true winner in a doubles elimination tournament. This happens when a team that lost earlier in the day fights their way back through the loser's bracket and then earns an opportunity to play against the undefeated team in the winner's finals. In this finals match, Anderson and Booth have battled Hamner and Moore tough and have forced a winner-takes-all game to determine the champion. Okay, we are back at center court here at Palm Creek in Casa Grande, Arizona, the 2017 USAPA National Championships Game of 15 for the gold medal match in mixed doubles. Alex Hamner to serve. Oh, 
Ooh. Right off the bat, Anderson just smokes the two-handed backhand. Yeah, but interestingly enough, so that's the first time I've seen Alex Hammer come up and hit that forehand. Generally, she's pushing it, trying to get it down. She just changed a pace there. Maybe, maybe she and Scott have spoke in the intermission and said, "We got to go a little bit harder from you, Alex." Um, but it certainly looked that way. You know, they're wow. still using the lob tactic. They are. That worked there. And again, it's down the line. It's it's Alex in front of Kevin, going down the line to each other. Kevin's looking for a ball. They gain a lob, what we call lob volley off of. It's a volley off of a lob. Wow. Wow. Oh. oh. This net is being a friend of Scott Moore tonight. It is that. Alex is quick on her feet. She's getting out of the way because she could get hurt bad <laughs> in this trip. Yeah, that's going to be deep. Hmm. Two zero. Two zero. Kevin on two. Nice ball by Chris. Oh, Kevin, you gotta let that go. Yeah. Don't let that. Kevin. Wow. He, uh, he, he being Kevin, has done a great job of getting back on that ball and hitting a very strong overhead. Are you surprised that they're using lobs so much in this game? Well, I, I, again, you're trying to break rhythm is what you're trying to do, and that's what both teams are doing. A lot of the, lob, uh, the effectiveness of the lob is to hit it when you can hit any shot in the book. In other words, as opposed to saying, okay, I'm going to go back and admit a defensive lob. Everybody knows what, what's going to happen, whereas you guys are in a uh, hands battle or something of that nature, and then all of a sudden the ball gets had it hit in the air on a volley and hits a lob. So it, it makes footing very, very tricky. So anything that's disguised is very effective in a lob, in lob format. More serving 0-3 in this game of 15. Kevin and Chris have done a very good job of keeping Scott out of this match, of this set so far. God, it's a great shot. Oh, great exchange here. Look at this. What a point. <laughs> More yeah. down the middle. Do Great you, point. Do you really think Scott had to say, I've got it, prior to hitting that ball? <laughs> Alex knew what was going on. She was in uh. fear of her life on that point. <laughs> oh, maybe not. Oh. So Kevin and Chris are trying to make Alex hit as many balls as they can or as many balls as she can and trying to keep Scott as far from this game as, as they can. We'll see how effective this continues. Oh, great, no, great shot, shot by shot. Alex. Yeah, great shot. Anderson with the serve up 3-1. Whoa. No, splits the D on that one. He held that ball, what I call held the ball, sat with the ball on his racket or prior to his racket, made it look like he was going to hit the ball soft and then flicked the wrist. So the disguise is what made that shot very effective. Wow. Booth stepped in. Oh, and Alex nets it. Wow. Chris and Kevin are playing very well. Going at Booth. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Patented double hand backhand down the line. She is hitting that ball cross court, daring Scott to go over there and hit the ball back at her because she's standing there on the backhand side ready to <laughs> swing. And she hasn't missed any at this point. Six one, game to fifteen. Six one two. Chris Anderson serving. 
Good depth on the serve. Oh my God. No, oh, that's just wide. Oh. I think Kevin would like to have that one back. Chris hit a bomb of a forehand that was two inches off the ground. Kevin moved in to try to punch it away. Just missed it. Nice. Wow. Nice. Oh, more not put away. Nice shot by Alex. Two six. Hamner serving. Game of fifteen. The winner, gold medalist. Rare miss. Yeah, and you know what, though? Scott kept the ball down. Mm -hmm. So Chris had to dig the ball as opposed to anything up in her shoulders. Couldn't hit it quite as hard. Scott did a nice job with that ball. Nice shot by Alex. Wow. Oh, good try. You know, Chris continues to go behind Scott. There's a lot of pressure in taking that ball inside out like that and hitting it very close to that sideline. She's done a great job. Man, she... I haven't seen a stitch of nerves from Chris Anderson in the last two games. Not a bit. Does she not realize she's playing in the <laughs> national championship finals? God, don't tell her, man. Look at that. Nice. Oh, nice. beautiful shot by Kevin Booth. Nice. They're starting to pull away a little bit now. It's 8-3. Yeah, yeah it, 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 it is. And, and if I'm going to guess right now, Chris... Chris and Kevin have got to continue to use a lot of variety, uh, and that's the way that they'll continue to progress in the game. Scott's got one mode at this point, and it's going to get more aggressive. I can assure you that, and we'll see if they can weather the storm. 8-3, mm -hmm. made the teams switch courts. Anderson to serve now. Oh. I think a little indecision on the partners there yeah, on who is going to take it. Yeah, Alex is standing there. So now the line's being affected. So Alex is going, okay, that's Scott's ball. You know, Scott's going, well, that might be yours, Alex. But that was a good good shot nonetheless. God, that's a great point. Right on side the line. Oh, great backhand by Booth. They're feeling it now. A little team ascension maybe. 10, 3, 1, Anderson serving. Game to 15. Kevin and Chris won the two out That's of three. wide. Chris would like that one back. That might be the first ball she's missed in about 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's played spectacularly tonight. Absolutely. That's a great serve right on the line. Scott with great court coverage. Gosh, That's so wide. Wow. <laughs> Three, ten, one. More serving. Oh, Great incredible. Shot, but Anderson's going to hit it again. Oops. Yeah, Booth with a put away. A different tactic yeah, on the serve change. there. They've kept, they've kept, Chris and Kevin have kept Scott at bay in this game. Uh, they've done a great job hitting behind him and staying on Alex. And Alex is doing a great job. She's, she's fighting and weathering the storm, and we'll see if it continues. That's wide, too. 11-3 now. Closing in on the magic number of 15 to win the gold medal. 11-3. Behind. Oh, great, great shot. shot by Alex. Great <laughs> shot. That's that shot where you let the ball go around the post, let it get as low as possible, and just try to slap it like a racquetball shot, keep it an inch or two off the ground. Great job by Alex. Mm. 
Yeah. As the grunts coming out. You know, I'll tell you, Kevin's done a great job with his hands. Mm -hmm. Oh, splits the defense on that one. Moore serving 3-11-1, game to 15. That's what, that carries long. On the line. On the line. Oh. There's, tried to there's sneak it over. Yeah, there's Mr. Moore looming large in the middle. And Kevin just tried to feather it down the line. Very difficult shot, excuse me. 4 11 2. Hamner serving. Ooh. That could prove to be costly. Could be. That's going to be, oh, oh just good. inside the line. That looked like it was going to go easy, long. Easy, Drew. Easy over there, buddy. <laughs> That's a great shot. Oh, nice reach. Oh! <laughs> There's that lob again. Off of a lob volley. That's out. Oh, that looked deep, didn't it? It, it was out. He missed it. Wow. 12 4. Anderson serving. There's that serve. Again. Smokes it in. She just oh. Rushes it. 13 4. Let's see how she handles Mr. Moore here. I don't think Moore she's. Loop. She, she, doesn't, she doesn't have any problem. Oh, just wide. Kevin had a net cord there. Had a had a possibility to put the ball away, hit the top of the net. Wow. She's taking charge. Miss referee over there. Hamner serving 4-13-1. Got a bunch of work to do. Great deep return. Great drop wow. shot there for I, Booth. Again, set up with the return. A couple inches from the line. Now Alex is hitting that third ball from three feet behind the, the baseline as opposed to hitting it on the baseline. Very difficult shot. Another deep return. Oh. Anderson sails hers wide so, and deep. So Scott's taking a chance. He's stepping out there trying to hit it as hard as he can. He did not surprise Chris, but nonetheless, it won the point. Great. There we go. If you had to pick one shot tonight, it's that Anderson two-handed backhand. Up around her shoulders. Oh, more nets it. Here we go. Match point. Championship point. 14-5. Booth serving. And they're giddy. <laughs> they got the giddies. I was <laughs> gonna, that was my term. I was going to use that, Drew. You yeah. got the giddies. Wow. Well, on, on the line. line. Again. On the oh, that's going to be wide. Oh. Yep. Oh. Kevin apologizes to Chris on that one. Fourteen five two serving match on the racket. Ah, not enough. That was a little tight. Maybe she is a second <laughs> pressure. I haven't seen it in this match, but possibly. Stranger things have happened, I can tell you that. Nice shot by Alex. Oh, Chris is just banging it. Good 
deep return. Yeah. That was wide. All right, here we go again. Championship point. Championship point. I'll bet you Chris Jeff's up here and, and smacks this yeah, ball. Yeah, I think on the it's, this what is going to go a little hard. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Oh, almost. So Chris and Kevin are going, okay, we got to win one point here. <laughs> a little pressure. It's tough. It, it is absolutely tough to, put, to close the match out. Oh, lucky on that. Ooh. Deep breath. Chris Becker going, deep breath. Deep breathe, Kevin. <laughs> Keeping it away from Chris, it looks like. Smart move. Oh, and that's going to be wow. it. That is wow. it. Championship point. That's Kevin Booth and Chris Anderson defeating Alex Hamner and Scott Moore. Wow, that was a great match. I enjoyed watching that. Kevin Booth, Chris Anderson, 50-plus gold medal winners in mixed doubles. How's that sound? Amazing. It's a lot of work, but it was a long day, but um, we pulled through. How do you guys do it? You know, you probably play like eight, ten matches in one day. The stamina, the energy you guys have to put forth and you play a guy like Scott Moore. That's incredible. Yeah, we're snacking and drinking all day and, you know, keeping hydrated. But uh, we played together a long time, we, so we're used to this. It's good. You know, if you, have, if you had to pick one patented shot tonight, your two-handed backhand shot was working. It really was, wasn't it? Yeah, my backhand, two-handed backhand volley, well, I've played a lot with Scott, so it helps, you know, knowing where, what his tendencies are and... Yeah, we played well. We came, brought it tonight. What about the what about the tactic of using lobs? You don't see that that very much in pickleball. You seem to use that pretty effectively tonight. Yeah, a lot more people are doing it now. You know, trying to mix it up a little bit, be aggressive. You, you know, try to do it when we're serving so we can score points. But it works sometimes. Sometimes not. But Alex has an incredible <laughs> overhead for yeah. a woman. She handles yeah. the lobs so well. Yeah. You know, what about this crowd tonight for hanging around this late? There isn't a great crowd. Pickleball fever in this town. Yeah. It was a really exciting crowd. We we're so happy everybody stayed and cheered us on. Coming up next, the Open Mixed Doubles. Coming up next, the Open Mixed Doubles. Our final event of the evening is the Mixed Open Doubles, featuring some familiar faces already seen in this broadcast and players who may end up as the next championship team. The mixed doubles match has the following lineup, Lucy Kovalova and Matt Wright going up against Simone Jarjing and Daniel Moore. Kovalova out of Wichita, Kansas, had quite a 2016 U.S. Open, was the champion in mixed doubles, champion in women's doubles, and also the champion in women's doubles at 5.0. She played four years of tennis at Wichita State for the Wheat Shockers. Matt Wright, meanwhile, out of Wichita, Kansas, is the 2016 USAPA National Silver Medalist in mixed doubles at 19 and over. 2016 USAPA National Silver Medalist in Open Mixed Doubles, was also the U.S. Open Champion in Mixed Doubles at 19 and over in 2016, Men's Doubles Champion in 35 and over at the 2016 U.S. Open, and he played Division I tennis as well at the University of Michigan. Simone Jarjing, one of the faces of pickleball, the 2016 USAPA Nationals Champion in Women's Doubles, in Mixed Doubles, and also in Women's Singles at the 2016 U.S. Open. She was the 2016 Tournament of Champion in pro singles and doubles, played tennis at Auburn and Fresno State, and also the former head tennis coach at Michigan State University for the Spartans. Daniel Moore, meanwhile, out of Colorado Springs, Colorado, was the 2016 USAPA Nationals Champion in men's 19 and over singles, the Open Champion in mixed pro doubles at the 2016 US Open, as well as the mixed doubles champion in 25 and over. Currently, Daniel Moore is living in Nagano, Japan. Matt Staub and I will see you courtside as we join game three of this match in progress. Okay, we're going to start a game of 15 now. Jardine to start serving. That painted the line. Let's see if they get in that same cross court. Looks like this is going to be the X and O for the game to 15. Yeah. 
That's long. <laughs> good reaction from Moore to get out of that way of that one. Definitely a good play to try to surprise your opponent. If the ball is at your feet, it's not very common that you are going to attack that ball. Sometimes you can catch them off guard. At least keep them off balance with that shot, even if you don't win the point. Jardine and Moore pick up the first point of the game. Matt just constantly reaching in there. And puts that one away. Such a long reach. So tough to deal with in a game where you're always taught, you know, get the ball to their feet. That's, that's the number one rule. Get the ball down. And then you play somebody like Matt, it's almost impossible. Matt completely in the service box where Lucy is. Great dig by Simone. Oh, oh, look at oh. this. <laughs> oh, what a great shot. So not only does Matt jump the kitchen, but flicks a clean backhand <laughs> winner dink cross court. I hope we can see that one again. That was an incredible <laughs> shot by Matt Wright. I promise you there are not many people doing that. <laughs> and he can't handle one right at him. One all, right serving. Oh. Lucy down the line, her patented shot tonight. Makes it 2-1. Important to get off to a hot start, especially in the game to 15. You'd be surprised how many of these 15-point games end up being kind of runaways just because you get a little momentum. We've come so far, and then you get that little letdown if you do get down early. Great reaction. Great Maybe net exchange. a touch early from Daniel. Here we're going to see Daniel hop the kitchen on that backhand roll at Lucy. You know, he's won a lot of points doing that. Ball might have been a touch low. I'd like to see a timeout from Simone and Daniel right now if they do lose this point. So here we see the unconventional, unstacked look where Simone is in front of Lucy. Opting to go cross court with Matt. Wow. Huge. So it's interesting that Simone was going cross court with Matt. I know she does love her cross court backhand, but she didn't play down the line to Lucy. Oh, a late call, and they called it out. It's 1-5 with more serving. Now uh, kiss that one goodbye. That's got to be pretty ominous looking when you're on the <laughs> court to see a, a Matt Wright overhead coming at you. That stays in. Oh. Lucky to win that point. Right now, Matt is seeing too many balls. It's reminiscent of the first two games. He's just getting his hand on too much. If you're Daniel and Simone, you need to neutralize him for a couple points at least. It's getting hot. All right, right starts to serve here. They're up 5-2. In this game to 15. Matt makes that third ball drop shot just look so casual. Yeah, I, know. I promise you it's not that easy. Oh That's deep. 
<laughs> Simone, he can't believe it. Oh, two quick points. They, I think they, they're going to call a timeout. And I think we will, too. You're watching the 2017 USAPA National Championships. All right, we're back playing a game of 15 here on center court at the 2017 USAPA National Championships. Matt Wright and Lucy Kovalova up 7-2. Wow. point from Lucy. Lucy is, <laughs> they're both playing great, but I'm telling you, Lucy has really come to play tonight. I think starting in game two, she just had that backhand in the middle locked and loaded. She's been defending that all night long. I think when she got hit in the mouth with that one ball, I think that has really spurred her on. 8-2 now, right serving. You know, this could be a time, 8-2 that I think Daniel and Simone think about maybe playing Simone head-to-head -head with Lucy. Change up the look, do something, because they're on a roll right now. You know, you could use your second time out a little early for that, but they need to do something. A rare unforced ever from Kovalova. They're still up 9-2, and Lucy has the serve. Lucy's still moving her feet very well on that point. I'm fine with that miss. Staying patient, staying within herself. Net court makes it go wide. There's no look at it. This whole point started with Matt defending that one backhand flick off of his off his backhand side. Neutralized, got that point back in their favor. Ended up winning because of it. That's an unbelievable cross. Great court. shot. Opens up the middle of the court. Kovalova hits it. That is a heavy backspin cross-court shot. The moment that wiffle ball hits the court, it just skids so difficult to defend. Oh. <laughs> Kovalova gets nailed again. Matt trying to reset that point twice. Almost got the ball down, almost got it in their favor. Wow, what a shot by Simone. Call was good. Matt not just letting anything bounce right now. That's how you know he's really feeling it. You know, if he's not backing up, taking everything out of the air, that's when his game's at its best. Great dig from Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> the speed of Simone, she got to it, and got right in front of the referee Byron's face. Oh, that was that was funny. Matt opting for the drop shot can just take it at such a high point. It's I mean has to barely touch it. He's so far over that kitchen line. 
Inside. Great shot. Here's that inside out forehand we've been talking about all night. You've seen everybody use it. Just so effective in this game. That's just long. Nine two in the game of 15, Kovalova to serve. Good return from Daniel, nice and deep. Definitely need a few points here. Whether you need to take, you know, maybe a risk, I'm fine with taking maybe something you wouldn't normally hit. You just need something to get you going. Did it again. Right on cue. <laughs> what a patented shot by Simone Jardine. Let's see if that gets him going a little bit here. Call was out. Did sail a little deep. Just need to get the score up there where at least Matt and Lucy have to start thinking about it a little bit. Yeah. Smart timeout yeah. from Matt there. Yeah. Stop it before it starts. 9-5 in the game of 15 here at the 2017 USAPA National Championships. Matt Stop, Drew Wampy, CBS Sports Network. We'll be back with more action right after this short timeout. All right, Simone now serving down 5-9 in this game of 15. That just was wide. That's a huge forehand from Daniel. You just, you know, you can't have Matt and Lucy running away with it because they're just going to play so freely and make you pay so quickly. So it's good to see Daniel and Simone get back into this. Paddle control is, uh, is incredible. Great play from by Daniel. Daniel. You know, Matt hit that heavy cross-court slice, and if Daniel's not moving his feet extremely well to get outside of that ball and get it at its best point, that ball will eat most people up. But mm -hmm. footwork is what got him out of that. 7-9, Jardine serving. Oh, he sailed that long. Matt was looking up at the lights. I'm not sure if that interfered with his uh, overhead. Don't look out now. We got ourselves a ball game. 8-9. That's wide. 9 all. Another timeout. That's their final timeout in this game of 15. Jardine and Moore have come back from being down 9-3. Six straight points. Crowd cheering them on. They're getting their money's worth tonight, that's for sure. Great, great action here. Free pickleball. You know, what really got that whole thing started was that around the post shot. They're down 9-3. You know, they really don't have anything going for them to this point. Simone hits an amazing around the post. Now, that was not the traditional easy around the post. <laughs> this, was, this was not very far outside of that post. Threads the needle, just gets this whole train rolling. I can see why she has been so successful over the years. Her anticipation of the, of the ball is incredible. You know, it can come from tennis, that's for sure. Little different in this atmosphere, but I mean, the anticipation, the footwork, the hands, she's the whole package. And to Lucy's credit, she has matched her step for step today. Absolutely. You know, the backhand in the middle has been unloading. <laughs> it's unbelievable what she's been doing with that thing. All right, we're back now, nine all. Jardine to serve. 
Still first server for Simone and Daniel. Matt and Lucy just need to get off of that first server. It's kind of like getting that first yeah, base runner out. You got to right. get that leading lady out. Exactly. That's what they did now. So Daniel Moore serving nine all. It's just huge for the confidence. When they're on their first server, you feel like you're an eternity away from getting the ball back. Oh. You know, interesting Matt went with the drop shot there. It's so easy to second guess, but some with an overhead that powerful. Oh, Moore and Chardine now, first time they've led all game long. Oh, that was a nice shot by Kovalova. They get the serve back now, 9-10. You know, Matt and Lucy roll that low ball out of the air. It's so hard to do, and they make it look so easy. <laughs> Simone. So rare to see a mistake like that from Simone at, at a critical point in the game, too. You know, it looks like she's feeling it a little physically, and who can blame her? Yeah. You know, and that like that's an error strictly of physicality. Legs are definitely feeling a little jittery. Oh. Ball skips off the line. And now Kovalova and Wright have regained the lead, 11-10. Right now is where mentally you just got to be so tough. Oh, great shot by Wright. Beautiful. Inside out forehand again. There it is every time. Smart timeout from Simone and Daniel. 12-10 in this game of 15. We'll be back after this commercial break. Twelve ten, right serving. First server as well. Oh, right down the middle. Pun included. <laughs> that shot's to so tough. He has not pulled that out one time. And then up 12-10 in the game to 15, finally pulls out that down the middle. Wow, that was a, a heck of a return by Simone. You know, I'm not sure if she meant to do that, yeah, but the two-handed inside-out <laughs> dink winner. Maybe a little bit of a miss hit, but stayed in. We'll give her the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to Simone, you don't question anything. Oh, oh wow, they're, they're feeling it now. Fired up. Here we go. Championship point. Yep. 14-10. Lucy Kovalova with the serve. Serving it to Simone. That would be appropriate. End it on dinks here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and they're getting a standing ovation here in Casa Grande. Well deserved. <laughs> On behalf of the USAPA, I'd like to thank Design Pickle and all of our great sponsors for their support. A special thanks to our game analysts, production team, and the CBS Sports Network. Be sure to check out a pickleball event in your area soon. I'm Drew Wathie. Thank you and good night.